Okay, now, but this is this is good. The model that comes out of this optimization problem is very explainable, right? So, so basically, it says that if I if I use this term to zero out some of these a's, I get a model that says that my y only depends on these factors and independent of the other factors, uh, other factors that are zero out. But again, what is the problem about solving this optimization problem? It's again discontinuous, right? So just the moving one of the edges from zero to non-zero, an infinitesimal change, is going to suddenly make the objective function jump by a factor of by, by amount of lambda. So so this is. Uh, uh, a good optimization problem if it can be solved. But in practice, nobody really solves that problem because exactly it's, it's very hard to use a grading based method to do that. So in practice, what we have been doing in regularization is trying to construct things that has the spirit of variable selection, but not exactly this problem. So, so this, um, this, for example, is called L0 norm by people, but it's actually not really a norm. So, but it's still called L0 norm. But like, uh, uh, so, so mathematically, this is not a proper norm. So, for example, one of the proper ways to add a, a, a something that is the norm of the coefficients aj is I'm minimizing the same thing, but plus a lambda times the same thing times the absolute value of aj. Now, this actually is differentiable almost, uh, I mean, sorry, not differentiable. This is actually continuous, right? It's no longer discontinuous. The problem above is discontinuous in the sense you move aj from 0 slightly to 10 to the minus 300. Your objective function jumps for lambda. The gradient is infinity. Well, here I have actually a continuous function, although not smooth. The derivative is not continuous, right? If you move your aj from plus minus uh, 10 to the minus 300 to minus 10 to the 300, uh, minus 300, the derivative with respect to aj suddenly goes, uh, jumps a factor of 2 lambda. But the objective function is continuous. So gradient-based optimization kind of works on this one. <laughs> and uh, because this is actually not just a, a continuous problem, it's a piecewise quadratic optimization problem. Right? Being piecewise quadratic means if you look at any quadrant of this A, where all the A's take the same sign as, as you move through the domain of A's, it's a quadratic function. So it has that special form. And the people have taken, used that special form to construct a specific algorithm to solve that problem. So, so if you look into the uh, literature of uh, uh, statistical learning, this is called the, the lasso, lasso regression. And uh, there are several very, uh, very established uh, algorithms specifically to solve that problem. The problem with, uh, with, uh, ab with the sum of absolute value being the penalizing term and uh, the rest of the objective function being a quadratic function. Okay, so basically, if you have a quadratic objective function plus a sum of absolute values of the variables to be optimized, that's a lasso regression. And uh, uh, if you look at uh, any popular languages, like uh, I think including MATLAB or Python, R or anything, they have built-in libraries and functions to do this kind of a lasso regression. All right. And the nice thing about this lasso regression is that it actually is going to automatically make the coefficients zero if that coefficient doesn't help that much. You can visualize that by 
specializing this objective function in one dimensions. If you just look at, let's say I have only one of these A's and an objective function. So without adding the lasso term, let's say lambda equal to zero, I usually have a quadratic form like this, right? Now imagine I start to add a small lambda, what does it look like? With a small lambda, when a is equal to zero, it doesn't change anything, right? When a is positive, it starts to add a constant slope. So my objective function is going to look something like that. So basically, the the larger I deviate, the uh, the larger my absolute value of a is, the larger the deviation from the green line is. I get something like this. And I start to create a non negligible angle over here, right? Because the absolute value I'm adding, oops, the absolute value I'm adding is effectively has an angle. The larger lambda is, the, the smaller that angle is. Now if I add a larger and larger lambda, so, so by adding this small lambda, my optimal, which originally is here, has moved closer to the origin. But now if I add a large enough lambda, my objective function is going to become like this. My angle is going to be smaller and smaller up to the point that on both sides of the origin, the objective, fun objective function goes up. In that case, what is the optimal? Yeah. Exactly zero, right? So, so basically, if my lambda is large enough, I mean large compared to the gradient of the original objective function at a equal to zero, then adding this lasso term is actually going to make that coefficient exactly equal to zero. So in some sense, this lasso regression achieves some aspect of the red optimization problem, which is usually very hard to solve, but actually has the meaning of doing variable selection. All right. But still, the lasso regression problem is not exactly easy to solve. And uh, the specialized algorithms usually works only if the first part of the objective function is quadratic. If you do something not linear regression, right, which means your first part of this objective function is usually not quadratic, then these specialized algorithms doesn't work. And uh, if you add this uh, lasso objective fun uh, lasso penalization onto the objective function, it becomes an objective function that is very hard to optimize.